Hello everybody, this is Arderimus, and in this video tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to build a very simple Visual Basic game from the ground up. Uh, I'll be using Visual Studio 2010, which you can download from uh, Microsoft's website. You can get the Express version anyway, the professional you have to pay for. In this video we'll be covering some of the basics such as uh, how to use a tile map and how to move a character around the screen uh, like you see here. Also we will cover back buffering which will help eliminate flickering and whatnot from your game. Okay so the first thing we're going to do is create a new project. Uh, we want to use a Visual Basic Windows Forms application and we've got to give it a name. I'm just going to call it My Game and hit OK. And it's going to start up a brand new form for us. Uh, the first thing that I think we'll do is put in a picture box. And the reason I'm going to use a picture box is so we're uh, bringing our resources into the game first thing and then during our game loop we're not going to be uh, drawing files from the disk which is a slow process that can affect performance. So this picture box will serve as our tile palette. Uh, I've prepared a small tile map to use for this tutorial. So I'm going to select my image box there, go down to the image property and change that and I'm going to import an image I like Little Grass Dude, he's pretty cool, but uh, I'm going to use the one that I created for this tutorial. And there it is. Now the reason you see a fuchsia border around our guy is because we're going to end up masking that out and that will actually create a transparent border around him so he's not just a block walking around the screen, um, as you saw previously. So I went ahead and imported that in, and we're ready to begin coding. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is click on the double click on your form there, and it should bring you into the code editor. And what we want to do first is import our graphics drawing library. It's very important. So we're going to type imports system dot drawing and that'll allow us to manipulate graphics while we're programming. Alright, the next step is to create some variables that we're going to need throughout our game. Alright, so let's start by creating some graphics objects that we can use to draw things to the screen. We'll start with our main graphics object. I'm just going to call it G as graphics. I'm going to also dim BBG, which is going to be used as our back buffer graphics. Um, and then we're going to create some rectangles. A source rectangle and a destination rectangle. And those will be used as literally as a stamp pad. We're going to stamp from our tile palette and then sort of paste that directly to the screen uh, during our game loop. Uh, the next thing I want to create is a bitmap. And this is uh, a picture. This is going to represent our actual stamp. Or, I'm sorry, that'll actually, what that'll be is the image that's stored to our picture box. Um, I'm going to use that to kind of simplify our code so I don't have to call that by name every time I want to use it. It's already in memory so it'll be a nice fast pull. Uh, next bitmap I'm going to create is going to be our BB, our back buffer. Whoops, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's also a bitmap. Um, and that back buffer will be created at the same size as our screen. So it'll be a copy of our screen that will be updated and then drawn back to the screen and that's how the back buffering works. So what we're going to do next is go down to our form load and initialize a couple of the variables that we created. Uh, this will happen whenever you start the game first thing. So we're going to 
set our BMP to be a new bitmap and that's going to uh, tie directly to our uh, picture box that we created. So I'm going to just call this ptiles.image. Now you'll notice that there's a little bit of an error there to begin with because I haven't actually named ptiles yet. So we got to come back to our form, uh, click on your picture box, and give it a name. I'm going to call it picture tiles. Now, when we go back here, it should be quite happy. We'll drop down to the next line, uh, grab our initialize our graphics object. So we'll say me dot create graphics. And me is just uh, your main form. Um, we'll also initialize our back buffer new bitmap. And it's just going to be a blank picture that's exactly oops, width and me the height. So it's exactly the same size as our form, me.width and me.height. All right, now we're going to create our drawing routine. Uh, we're going to do private sub draw all. And I'm going to create our coordinates using x and y as integers. And then we're going to loop through those to draw our tiles to the screen. So we'll do for x equals 0 to 5. That's going to draw six tiles across. And inside of that loop, we're going to create another loop to draw our y coordinates y equals 0 to 5. And that's going to draw six tiles down. Okay, now that we're in our loop, we're going to create our source and destination rectangles, and then we're going to tell it to draw it. Uh, first, we'll start with the source rectangle. I'm going to create a new rectangle. 0, 0, and then 50 by 50, and I'll explain those in a moment. New rectangle. <clears throat> this one's going to be x times 50, y times 50, and then 50 and 50. Okay. <clears throat> so what we did is we created our source, and this is going to reach out to that BMP image, uh, which is really just a copy of the picture box that we put on the other form. It's going to grab the first, uh, the very first pixel on that and go over 50 and down 50 pixels. So essentially, if we went back to our form and looked at it, you'd see this. It's really just going to start here go over 50 and down 50. So we're going to grab this first block, okay? Uh, in a real game, you're going to end up, you know, changing those values based upon what tiles you want where. <clears throat> um, so then we're going to send it to our destination rectangle, and we used our coordinates from our loop that we created. Uh, if we didn't say 50 uh, times 50 here, what would happen is it would be it started at 0, then it would go to 1. So essentially, every pixel, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 5, every pixel, it's going to redraw our block. Um, so what we want to do is go 0 times 50, so the first 50 pixels will be a block, and then 1 times 50, and then the next 50, and each one will be a new block. And it'll do the same for Y, and it's always going to be a block of 50 pixels. <clears throat> now you can always change that to something more dynamic using a you know later on you can use a variable to specify what pick uh, what tile size you want. I'm just using static 50s here, so um, so we're going to use our graphics object now to draw image. What image do we want to draw? Well, we want to draw BMP, but not the whole thing. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is first specify 
where we want to stick our drawing. Well, we want to draw it to the form, right, which is our destination rectangle. And we want to copy it from the source rectangle. So we only want a chunk of that BMP image. Um, after we do that, we're just going to say graphics unit as pixels. So it knows that it's drawing in pixels and not something different. So if we got this all correct and we ran this draw routine, it should dump the images that we've selected to the form. All right, now let's see if we did this correctly. Um, let's go into our Form 1 load and click this list here to see a list of all the form events that we can utilize. We're going to go ahead and use the paint event. Um, normally you would be creating your own game loop, but this kind of checks the form and redraws it quite frequently, so uh, it works for a quick and easy game loop. Uh, let's just call our draw all that we just created and test it out and see how it works. Hey, look at that. It grabbed the first tile on our tile palette and replicated it across our form exactly as we wanted it to. Um, let's try another number just to just to get an idea of what I was talking about earlier here. Change our source to x0 and y50. Look at that. Now we've got all the trees. See it just dropped down to the next 50 pixels and started working with it. So now you can kind of see how you could change your tiles to be what you wanted them to. All right. All right, guys. Next up, we're going to go ahead and draw our guy. Uh, first thing we want to do is give him a location. Uh, he needs to be somewhere, so we're going to do a guy x coordinate as an integer. Set the value to 1 just so he's somewhere by default. Guy y as integer equals 1. All right. Now we're going to draw him in our draw routine. We don't want to draw him before or during our map tile loop uh, because this will just, every time it loops through, it's going to redraw the entire screen so everything that's under that will get wiped out. So we draw, we lay down the grass first and then we put our guy on top of it. I'm going to go ahead and comment this, call it draw dude. And I told you earlier about the fuchsia border around our guy that we we're going to make transparent. We'll do that now. We'll take our BMP using its make transparent method. We'll set the color. Whoops color to fuchsia. Make sure I get that right. And then we will take our source rectangle, make a new one. And we're going to use the guy's coordinates on the BMP, which is 50 pixels over and zero pixels down and a size of 50 by 50 pixels. Then we'll use our graphics object to draw the image. Which image? BMP of course, that's our palette. And we're going to use his x-coordinate as the destination by his Y coordinate, and we're going to keep our source rectangle. So you notice we're not using a destination rectangle this time. We're just going to draw him uh, right at right wherever his coordinates are, and we'll set the graphics unit to pixels again. Better close that. All right. Now, what we're going to do is our final draw. We're going to take our 
graphics and say graphics equals graphics. If I could type it would be wonderful. And we're going to use its from image method to draw our back buffer. So we're setting our our back buffer to draw with our graphics. And then what we're going to do is take our back buffer graphics and draw that to the form. Me, whoops, sorry, me dot create graphics. I think I'm getting tired here. <laughs> and when we're all done, we're going to draw image BB, our back buffer, to the top leftmost part of our form with a width of the form's width and a height of the form's height. All right, now it's time to see how this runs. Okay, we're going to go ahead and run that. Hey, look at that. We have a guy. Um, now, we won't be able to move him until we add some controls, and that'll be our next step here. So let's go ahead and do that. To control our guy, we're going to use the form's key down event um, to detect key presses on the keyboard. So what we'll do is we'll go up here to our form load again and we'll grab our events drop down and look for key down. Here's our key down. It's going to go ahead and add a new sub for us. So what we're going to do is use a select case and we're going to use the events key code to capture which key was hit. And we'll just start adding cases. Uh, I like to use the good old-fashioned WASD movement method. Uh, you can use your arrow keys or whatever keys you want. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stick with mine here. I'm going to do case keys dot W. And I'm going to go ahead and just create all these at once. Case S, uh, case A, case D. So that's pretty simple right there. Um, let's go ahead. Uh, when we hit W, we want them to move up. So we're moving on the Y axis and we're going to subtract one. Every time you go up or left, it's going to be a negative. And if you go down or right, it's a positive. So we'll do guy Y equals guy y minus uh, say mm, how fast do we want him to move here we'll just do uh, five pixels okay so we'll take that and we'll go down to the next one here uh, moving down we're gonna do the exact opposite we'll do guy y equals guy y plus five so that should move him downward. And the A and D keys will move him left and right. So we'll start moving left. Guy X equals Guy X minus 5. Guy X equals Guy X plus 5 to move right with the D key. And there's one more thing we're going to want to do here. Um, because our form paint event down there isn't going to detect these keystrokes and automatically redraw the screen and the guy's changes, we're going to come down here after our select and just call our draw all. So every time your key is pressed or held down, that little uh, routine is going to fire. So let's go ahead and run this and see if it works like we hope it will. All right, there's our guy. I'm going to try moving right. Hey, look at that. I'm going to try moving down. 
Beautiful. No flicker or anything. So our back buffer is working nicely. Uh, we can move them any direction we want. Uh, we could also add constraints and stuff. We could tell it, you know, see if I draw out off the screen, it's no longer updating. My map loop isn't overriding his position, so it's got a nice little drawing effect there. It's kind of cool. Uh, if I go back onto the map where it's redrawing, oh, yay. See all the little tracers disappear because that part's getting constantly redrawn. Pretty cool. So that's how you make your little guy move. You're well on your way to uh, building the game here.